Hello, welcome back. Today I'm at Loretto Heights. It was an academy established in 1864 as an all-girls Catholic school. There is also a cemetery here where 62 nuns are buried. Um, and unfortunately, a developer has purchased this land a few years ago and they're going to be turning it into housing and retail. So I really wanted to get out and do this video before it completely changes. I am not sure if any of this is going to be here anymore, including the cemetery. So I want to show you around, tell you about the history of it, and then try to find the cemetery as well. So you can see all the development happening over here, um, which is pretty sad. This area just used to be all trees and greenery. It was very beautiful and also i don't know if you can see but it has a beautiful uh, view of downtown denver over there so all of this is just being ready for housing and retail so i'm going to tell you a little bit about their history and hopefully we'll try to walk around here and look at some of the buildings because i don't know how long they're going to be here the founding of Loretto Heights began in 1864 when Father J.P. Machabieff was sent as a missionary to Colorado. He was accompanied by three sisters of Loretto from the Kentucky Mother House. Upon their arrival to Colorado, they lived in a two-story framed house on what is now 15th and California Street. This building would become St. Mary's Academy of the Loretto Order a boarding school for young girls in the Denver area, teaching them foreign language and refined skills. While enduring the hardships of the developing West, the Sisters of Laredo gained high esteem and attracted many daughters of Colorado pioneers to their academy. As number of pupils increased, the Sisters expanded, continuing their mission of education and tradition. On March 19, 1888, Mother Pancratia Bonfies, a cousin to the prominent Bonfies family here in Denver, was superior of the academy and alumna of St. Mary's Academy. She sought to start a new academy far distant from the expanding downtown Denver area. Mother Pancratia and the other sisters chose a hill type site approximately seven miles southwest of Denver with a stunning panoramic view, which they called Laredo Heights. From this view, the sisters could see the Platte River in the east where miners had left their mark and to the southwest, they could see Fort Logan. Beyond that, it was recalled that the view was uninterrupted by any habitation of man. All right, sorry guys, I got stopped by security, but he was cool with me filming over here. So, thank goodness. <laughs> All right, soon after architects Frank Edbrook was contracted to design the main academic building and construction began in 1890. By November 2nd, 1891, the sisters and pupils were moving into the new building. Despite minor difficulties, lack of water and electricity, as they were so far from downtown, by 1892, all was under control and the sisters settled in. Try not to step on all the copper wiring that's over here. The growth of Loretto Heights continued, with the sisters developing a rich curriculum until they were threatened with foreclosure in 1894, after the Panic of 1893. Thankfully, Mother Superior Cardi was able to save the Academy from foreclosure and the Academy continued on. Through the many struggles the Academy faced, they were able to overcome and adapt to the constantly changing times. When World War I erupted, the sisters turned Loretto Heights Academy into a military training ground and held a national service school. By 1926, Loretto Heights had gained its college accreditation 
and Mother Superior Estacia Elder was organizing the separation of the college and high school. The Great Depression in World War II could not shake the deeply rooted Loretto Heights College. Loretto Heights College contributed to the war effort and in 1945 created its joint collegiate nursing programs to meet the growing desire amongst women for economic independence in the post-war era. In the face of the social changes and events happening around them, from new technology to the women's movement for equality, the civil rights movement, and the Vietnam War, tradition and morals at Loretto Heights remain consistent. While they simultaneously work to cope and adapt to societal changes. Loretto Heights College was the first school in the area to establish a women's studies research center. And in 1971, when they pioneered the University Without Walls program, the 12 other colleges across the nation, a program designed to help adult learners earn bachelor's degrees with flexible schedules, skills learned through life experience, counting as credits towards a degree and more practical based courses. And then in 1988, Loretto Heights shut its doors. Now afterwards, it did become a few other universities. Um, one was for international students. But now, yes, there is nothing here. You can see it is a very beautiful building. It says Loretto Heights College. There's a statue of Mary. And then way on that beautiful tower, it says Sisters of Loretto. We'll go see if we can look in the windows here. Some yeah, I can't really see anything. It's locked. All right. They have definitely dug up a lot here. Yeah, this used to be all beautiful grass and trees. And now it's just a pile of dirt. I'm just really surprised this place was never registered as a historic place because it's just, it's so amazing and beautiful. I don't know, it's just really sad. It's just really disappointing that this is just going to be lost to make housing and retail.
this looks like it was a chapel. A Lady of Moreno Chapel. I'm sorry guys, it's really windy today. says commission by Mother Pancratia Bodfies 1911. That is the founding mother and she is buried in the cemetery here. So hopefully we can go see her grave. Just look at this beautiful. Same stonework. Looks like there's probably a house over here. You know the security guy went to lunch, so <laughs> maybe I'm being more brave than usual. This looks like just like a Just says Casa. It smells old. Whatever is in there. This is a beautiful. Up around porch though. Let's see what's back here. This building is. And Crenshaw Hall laughs. Dedicated to summer 2021. I don't know. This is a I think this is where they're making a, the affordable housing units. So I think what they're doing in this building is just Gutting the inside basically for apartments. I think they're keeping the outside. 
Oh, there's the back of the, of the house right there. Maybe a few of the nuns live there. Right. <laughs> This brick building is very beautiful as well. Looks like they already, I see some new sidewalks and gutters built down there. You can see the cemetery off in the distance there. I see a, a, the cross, a white cross. It might be completely fenced off, but we'll go check it out later. They're definitely working over there. plans are for this building with the beautiful tower is hoping they at least keep the outside structure I'm very glad of doing this now because like I said it looks like in a few months I don't know what this place is going to look like anymore. Sadly. more boarded up buildings back there. Maybe it's more housing. I'm gonna go around to the back here. Thank you. 
it does have a very beautiful view of the mountains. I don't know if you can see that, but I think I'm going to try to get the drone out. Oh, sorry, the wind. get the drone out and see if we can fly up there and see what it would look like from the tower so see you over there So unfortunately, with all the development going on, they have the whole entire cemetery closed off and you can't even get in there. They have it all gated up. Now the developers say they're going to leave the cemetery here um, where 62 nuns are buried, but who really knows? I'm going to see if I can try to get the drone in there till we show you guys. Hope you enjoyed that video and getting to see Loretto Heights as well as the Sisters of Laredo Cemetery. Please like and subscribe for some more videos and I'll see you at the next grave. Thanks.